Story 1. I, 25 female, begged my partner, 28 male, for an open relationship. Eight months in, he left. Eight months ago, I, 25 female, asked my partner, 28 male, for an open relationship as I got bored with him. Nothing wrong, but he just didn't excite me much, and he agreed. But he proceeded to tell me there's a catch. If he catches feelings for a partner, he's going to leave me for her. And that's exactly what happened. And I want him back in my arms. He left me for his new partner, 28 to 29-ish female. What can I do to win back the love of my life? I just don't think this person knows what they want. You got bored with him, now you want him back. I think there should have been a, a better discussion or more understanding. Was it just her begging for this to happen and him just saying, okay, but this... Was there any talk about how would you feel about it? And I think this guy was just, like, done with it. It's sort of like someone who knows he's about to be fired and starts already looking for a new job. He was going to leave for this. It definitely doesn't sound like this was what the guy wanted. I'm not sure if there's anything you can do right now. Sounds like he's in a committed relationship now. Story 2. Cheerleaders can break dress code because they're school uniforms? Guess I'm wearing mine. Way back in 2013, I was a sophomore in high school, and there was a tradition that on Fridays, the cheerleaders, football players, without their pads of course, band members, and the other groups performing wore their uniforms to class. This wasn't a written tradition, and only the cheerleaders and dance teams' uniforms broke dress code. Nobody really batted an eye to it. I wasn't a skirt person, but I liked dresses once in a while. I grew up in Texas, and it's still significantly hot in August and September. So one time, while wearing a casual sundress in September, I was pulled out of class and reprimanded because the end of my dress was four inches above the knee, where the dress code said no shorter than two. I pointed out the cheerleaders and dance team's uniforms every Friday and how they reached mid-thigh at their longest, but was told that was okay because students can wear official school uniforms, and was sent home to change. Clearly, somehow, someone had forgotten I was on the golf team. Immediately, my mind was turning to the next Friday. The school had recently upgraded the golf team uniforms the year prior, and the girls' team uniforms consisted of a short sleeve collared polo shirt and a skort. If you don't know what a skort is, it's basically a skirt and short shorts combined. It looks like a skirt, but they essentially act like built-in bike shorts. And these suckers were short. I'd argue shorter than average cheerleader skirt. So that next Friday, about three days later, to my parents' surprise, I was ready to go that morning in my golf uniform, as compared to taking a bag to keep the clothes in to change into after school. But I just said, Fridays we can wear our uniforms to class. And they accepted without question and took me to school. Well, by second period, I was sent to the office yet again, and the first thing the assistant principal asked me was why I would deliberately disobey her right after our last conversation, and threaten school suspension. I'll never get anywhere in life by not listening, yada yada yada. When I finally had a chance to get a word in, I said, but this is my school golf uniform, and I pointed to our school's logo that was sewn into my polo shirt. You said students can wear official school uniforms to class. Why are the cheerleader uniforms okay and mine aren't? This isn't even a skirt. It's a skort. It has pants. I still remember how ticked off she was. She stared at me for what seemed like millennia. Then she snapped and told me to get out of her office and go sit in the lobby area. That I knew what she meant 
and she would be calling my parents about this blatant disrespect. So I waited and played on my iPod and chatted with the nice secretary, trying to keep myself distracted, because in reality, I had been really trying not to cry. I had massive anxiety when it came to authority, but I still had my naive sense of injustice, and I didn't want to just let this go. After about 20 minutes, she popped her head out and in a very monotone voice told me I could go back to class and let my teachers know I had gotten permission from the front office to wear my uniform. Then she went back in and closed the door before I could even think to respond. I spent the rest of my day dealing with teachers questioning me about my outfit and one or two calling the front office to double check my claim that I had in fact gotten permission and went to practice after school as normal before being carpooled back home. My dad met me at the front door with a small smirk, and I asked him what in the world happened, because I knew he was the go-to contact for my school. So I knew she called him. He explained that when she called and tried to get him to come to the school and get me, and talked about punishments for my insubordination, he immediately began to argue with her and admitted he raised his voice quite a bit, asking why I wasn't allowed to wear my sport uniform that the school provided to me as a dress requirement at my golf practice and mentioned taking this all the way to the school board and resolving this obvious favoritism. He then asked me not to do it again, but that he was proud of me and told me, I know I had told you never to start a fight, but to always fight back. I always thought physically, but damn, you sure took that advice. Why never do it again? If it was going to be hot, let her wear what she needs to to cool off. And it's their rules. It's a school uniform. If she has a way to stay cool during this, let her do it. I'm pretty sure some other people on the golf team probably would have followed suit anyway. I'm sure this wasn't the last of it, if it was going to be that hot. Definitely. Story 3. Entitled Woman Takes My Niece's Baby Yoda I Made For Her. They keep calling it Baby Yoda in this story, but we all know it's Grogu. The name is Grogu. Remember that? I know, I'm a geek. Recently, my sister and her husband came to really like the child in The Mandalorian. I crochet and made them a baby Yoda, something my four-year-old niece liked as well. I ended up making another baby Yoda in purple, my niece's favorite color, specifically for her. Yesterday, I was babysitting my niece, and we went to Walmart to pick up some snacks and ingredients for dinner. My niece insisted on bringing her baby Yoda with us. It happened fast while I was picking through bags of spinach. My niece, who was in the shopping cart, began screaming and crying. Despite not having any children yet, I am more than a little of a mama bear and instantly abandoned the spinach to check on her. My niece was halfway out of the cart, still screaming, pointing at a woman who was walking away with a very familiar purple baby Yoda in her cart heading towards the registers. I picked up my niece and stormed after this woman, abandoning my shopping cart as she turned into a register. She had put her things on the conveyor belt when I got there, most of her things already scanned, and she was trying to discuss prices for the Baby Yoda. It's not in the best of shape, and the price indicated it was twelve ninety five. dollars Could you give me a discount? I marched over, my sobbing niece in arm, and snatched the baby Yoda from the surprised clerk who was checking for a tag. The entitled woman screeched as she grabbed at the toy as well. How dare you! I'm buying this for my daughter! She loves purple, and those other ones are all green! This belongs to my niece. I made it for her, I snarled. Liar! You're just angry I got to it first! A manager must have been attracted by the noise of screams because he approached a less than pleased look on his face. There's something wrong here? The entitled woman pointed at me with her free hand. This woman is trying to take this doll I'm trying to buy for my daughter. I was still trying to keep a grip on Baby Yoda. I told you I made this. I doubt the Yodas sold here are made from yarn. 
The manager called security after a moment of trying to mediate, and I was forced to let go of the Yoda to talk to the guard. Luckily, I like to take pictures of my projects that I finish, so it only took a moment for me to pull out my phone and bring up a picture of the baby Yoda when I had finished it. We both turned back to the cash register, and my niece began to cry again when we saw the woman was gone and the manager approached us with a hard look. I realize that those toys are popular, but you shouldn't try to steal one of a specific color from someone. I held up my phone, the picture still up, and saw the man's face drain of color when he saw the toy in an environment that was very much not his store. But the damage was already done. He had sold my niece's toy to the entitled woman, and she had left. Needless to say, I'm never going back to that Walmart, and my niece is still upset about her purple baby Yoda being stolen. I'm making another one for her currently, one that will have her name stitched onto the back so this will never happen again. That is not a good manager. That manager should have resolved the information. Made of yarn? You think they would have sold that there? And purple? You think anybody at Disney is going to let a licensed toy go off brand like that? This is why you need to be up on your geek culture, so stuff like this is going to happen. And that entitled woman lied. She took a toy out of a four-year-old's hands. That is awful. Oh my goodness. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 4 Today I fracked up by hiding in my girlfriend's room when her strict Asian parents suddenly came home. Backstory to this morning. Since the lockdown for COVID-19 happened, I haven't seen my girlfriend for over a month plus. Our government recently relaxed the quarantine, so we're allowed to go out, but not loiter. Woke up to my girlfriend's call around 11 a.m. saying that her parents went out to get something. I thought, okay. I'll come over, return a camera that I borrowed, and maybe we can sit in my car around her neighborhood and hang out a while. It was a little rushed as her parents just left her house as I left mine. I'm about 20 minutes away from her place. She assured me her parents will be out for at least one and a half hours as they need to get lunch. I drove as fast as I could and picked her up from the front of the house and we drove to a nearby park to hang out. After a couple of minutes, I asked if she brought some water, as I asked her about it before I came, and she said, no. She said, why don't you come in and take some water, since her parents were still going to be far away. I said, yes, obviously, went in, drank some water, and we sat on the couch for a while to cuddle. I was a little paranoid, but I haven't seen her in a long time, so I needed it. About ten minutes, we hear a car outside her house, and that's how today I fracked up. It was her parents. They were only out for 40 minutes. Frack my life. We panicked, and luckily I parked away from her house and took my slippers in. I contemplated just owning up and lying that I needed to use the toilet, but her mom is really difficult. She would assume my girlfriend was lying and getting in trouble, and I haven't even met her parents officially as her boyfriend yet. If you're from an Asian family or have heard of Asian parents being strict about relationships, it's true. We both ran up to her room and I hid behind the door. Mind you, her room is really small. It's about the size of two single beds. Can't hide under the bed as she has to keep her door open and you can see straight under her bed from the stairs. The only place possible is behind her door. I stood there frozen as she went down the stairs to greet her parents. I could hear them coming in as I hugged the wall as tightly as I could. She came back freaking out but said, it's okay, let's just try to formulate a plan. She said, okay, and she went down to eat with them first. I then had to stay as silent as possible with no fan or air conditioning, so I sweated my butt off. 1 p.m.-ish, she comes back up and we try to listen whether her parents are coming up or not. 
They usually sit downstairs after lunch and nap, which they did. Gave me a little bit of relief as I could sit down on the floor. The space in between the door and her table is super tiny, which is uncomfortable, but I'm not complaining. 2 p.m. Her dad comes up to shower, and her door is right next to the bath area. Frick. I can hear the water rushing. But good news, my girlfriend is in the room during her work, so she can look out. It's weird as I'm just standing up behind the door and looking at her and looking back at me. After his shower, her dad leaves to go to his store, which leaves her mom downstairs. She gets on a long phone call, which gives me a bit of room to relax. My girlfriend and I made out a bit to calm our nerves, <laughs> and I gotta say it did help. For the next three hours, her mom stays downstairs, and we try to formulate a plan, but everything involves the timing of her parents, which is impossible. Can't jump out the window because it's grilled, and she doesn't have a key. Around 5.30 p.m.-ish, her dad comes home and almost fracking comes into her room. He asks her to print something, and she quickly walks to her door to stop him from coming in. I hear his voice right outside the door. Thankfully, he walks away and goes down to watch TV. And I swear to the deities, the universe wants us to suffer because right after that, her mom comes upstairs and hangs about the common area. My girls have rec had recorded a Zoom meeting, so she tells her mom she has a meeting and plays it and closes the door, giving my legs much needed rest, and I sit. At 7 p.m., her mom calls her from downstairs and says that it's time to eat. And that's where we're at now. <laughs> it's currently 9 p.m. at this sentence, and I can hear her family talking to each other. She has to turn up the lights and fan and air conditioning, so I'm freaking drenched in sweat in the dark. I'm sitting down, but I've got pins and needles in my feet now. I would stand up, but because the area is so tight, I don't want to risk any noise. Oh, remember how I haven't eaten and need to poo? That's attacking now. My stomach is growling and I'm making fart noises. I'm so scared to be caught because my parents are going to slaughter me too. My girlfriend and I will discuss our plans for me to escape when she comes up. Oh my goodness. Uh, you you deserve some sort of medal for endurance because I don't I wouldn't have been able to last. And where I record, I have to turn off the air conditioning when I record too, and it usually gets very warm. And I'm very grateful to record after the bulk. So not only that, I'm sitting down. I mean, this person has to stand up as well. So kudos for you for being able to stick it out this long. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.